What's up, fish tank people? Fishtanktv.com, Dustin's Fish Tanks, bringing it to you on a Greenhouse Saga Sunday. Saga continues. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're going to bring you up to speed on what's going on on Greenhouse 2.0. We actually broke ground, sort of. We're also going to talk about my first firing as a general contractor of Greenhouse 2.0. But it is Sunday. It is Species Sunday. I want to bring you all out to the Greenhouse in a minute and show you a plant that's been out of my life but is back in my life now. So last weekend was Aquashella, bro, and I gotta tell you, those folks put on an amazing show, and I'm super stoked to be doing those moving forward. It was awesome for me to actually meet people in person. I'm actually so socially deprived that I teared up on two occasions. One was when I spoke to a woman who had actually lost her landscaping business to a similar lady as the one that killed my greenhouse fail.0. Everything happens for a reason. I'm a better person because of it. Regardless, to hug a woman and have a, uh, a, a almost cry moment with her was special. I guess I'm not the only one in the world that has people killing things that are trying to work on. The second time your boy D got choked up was during the kids' aquascaping contest. Beneath this rapidly aging 37-year-old man lived a 12-year-old boy who's absolutely obsessed with fish tanks, and I got to relive that 12-year-old part of myself during the kids' aquascaping contest. Real quick, this is Alonzo. You can see the footage here, okay? The rules in my aquascaping contest, which are going to be free, and I have vowed on camera multiple times that I will be having at any live event that I go to a free kids live aquascaping contest. I'm just going on record with that. One of the rules during my aquascaping contest is this. If you're a kid and you're under the age of 15, you can borrow whatever plants you want. This is Alonzo. Alonzo came up to a 20 high that I had stacked full of plants. He took his arm, dug in, grabbed the most massive wisteria that I had in the entire tank. He then took that plant over to his little 10 gallon from our friends at Planet Aquarium. He tried the plant out. He took the plant back out, dripping all the way across the floor, put it back into my aquariums, and then took out another smaller one and tried it. I got hit up by his dad later on. He said, thank you so much for having the aquascaping contest. I really boosted my kid's self-esteem. Folks, very few of you know what you're put on this earth to do. That is why your boy Dusty was put on this earth, was to be the Johnny Appleseed of aquariums. So anytime I can do this with his young kids, it's truly moving. I had an absolute awesome time watching these kids just bright-eyed, ready to roll, scaping tanks, and poisoning them at a young age. So with that said, we're back in the box, making videos, talking to myself. With the smash success of Aquashella over, it's time to head home and work on Greenhouse 2.0. Now, as most of you all know, Aquariums are somewhat of a strength of mine, but new construction is not. Everything that I'm doing at this point is a challenge. Um, there's a great quote that says, there's no growth without discomfort, and I ain't never built new construction before. So we are in the thick of it with Greenhouse 2.0. What's the first thing that Dustin, I wish I was a pink dolphin, uh, would like to have on the property? It's water, okay? My original design for this is to have six yard hydrants similar to the ones I have next to Greenhouse 1.0 over here. I wanted to have these dug and trenched and rolling. Water, water everywhere. Everybody knows with aquariums, the easier it is to do water changes, the more success you're going to have. You can apply that in your own aquariums as well as me with the next greenhouse. So I wanted to get water lines dug. Fortunately, I had to wait on the state of Kentucky. What's this boy going to do with all this water here? We submitted the plumbing permits while I was on vacation. It took two weeks, but I finally got my plumbing permit approved. Now, here's the rub. Here's the inexperienced part from your boy D. The lot that I own out there in Nicholasville is not up on grade. I want to have these yard hydrants, six of them to be exact, doing 32 gallons a minute uh, all over the property. The problem is this. I wanted to get these trenched 30 inches deep into the ground and then coming up out of the ground. The problem with that is this, the ground is not up on grade. Look, a wise man knows he is not wise. I do not know squat about new construction. I got a father-in-law, his name is Poppy. You might remember him from some of the Greenhouse Fail.0 videos, although he was overshadowed by the lady when she handed me the black book of death. Regardless, anything that I have to do, I run by my father-in-law, Poppy. Poppy doesn't talk much, but when Poppy talks, you listen. Poppy told me this. I asked him, I said, hey, Poppy, what's up? I'll text Poppy. Poppy ain't calling. I text Poppy. I'm like, yo, Poppy, what's up, man? Hey, uh, question for you. I'm about to do these water lines, all six of them. I was thinking probably shouldn't I get this up on grade first? He sends me back a long, detailed engineering mind text basically saying, yeah, dude, you want to get that sucker up on grade. So 
I get my permits, I'm ready to put water in, then I realize if you want to do it, you got to do it right. So I decide to get the site up on grade. So I'm actually still in the process of getting quotes to bring the site up on grade because what I didn't want to do is this. I didn't want to put six yard hydrants out there, have water running, and then all of a sudden have guys with massive equipment uh, coming through and potentially knocking over one of my six yard hydrants that I just spent about 10 Gs to do. So I'm taking a step back, taking a step slower, delaying myself because I don't exactly know what I'm doing to get water out there. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to bring the site up onto grade and then once it's up onto grade I'm going to have them trench and put my water lines all around. So what else is going on besides the plumbing? Well I wanted to get the plumbing running sooner than later but while the plumbing is going on I figure we're digging trenches why not get the electric going. Here's the situation. This is the plot from our friends at, from our friends at Banks Engineering. Uh, this is the property line. It's 150 feet. Uh, this way from the road to the back of the property line. This is land owned by my man Mitch Canop, who I actually bought this lot from. He owned all the lots around here. He's also a builder. That comes into play here in a second. Now, while I'm rolling here, I want to get water onto the property. I also want to get electric. I find out that while I'm at the property, uh, the actual electric is from Bluegrass Energy, not KU. Any of you familiar with Kentucky know the KU sucks, and Bluegrass Energy should be a better way to go. Uh, there is a pole over here that is where the electric comes in from Bluegrass Energy. Coincidentally, way over here is one from KU. So I lucked out, I got Bluegrass Energy. Now, we gotta dig a ditch all the way across from here. I hit up Mitch, I'm like, yo man, I gotta bring, uh, I gotta bring electric across your property in order to get it to mine. Mitch is cool, Mitch is down. Mitch has been a hell of a dude to work with. He's like, yeah, no problem, man, we'll split the cost. That's dope, split the cost, right? So Mitch gets out there, he says, when are you gonna start? He texts me at 7.45 in the morning. He's like, oh, we're going to start today. I said, can you hit me with any more good news this morning? I go out there at 8.45 at night on a Friday night. You want hustling, that's hustling. I'm at 8.45 at night. The sun is going down. I go out there, and there is a man named Duck. Yes, this man introduced himself as Duck. Duck is sitting on the back of a machine that has trenched about three-quarters of this line back here along the back. I'm super stoked. Duck is getting it done. Meanwhile, I'm still battling with the person who I have contracted, haven't given any money to, but have contracted to do the plumbing. Duck is out here digging ditches, okay? Monday, I call the guy who I wanted to dig the ditches for the water. Now, to be fair, I have now adjusted my plan because I wanted to bring the site up on grade. The guy that I was going to have bringing the site up on grade wasn't calling me back. So on Monday, I'm looking at this and I'm going, now wait a minute here. Duck's been out there, he's dug three quarters of a trench and I'm about to get power. Why can't this guy come out here and even give me a quote on bringing it up to grade, then dig the ditches for this? I decide in a quick caffeinated rant that, you know what, if he's not calling me back and he's not giving me prices and he can't communicate, he is out. First firing happens before I even get water on the property. He's out, Mitch is in. I go out there on Monday, the trench has been dug all the way out there and Bluegrass Energy, the lady Tanya, is actually standing there. I don't talk to her because I'm on the phone with somebody else. She gives me a look, I give her a thumbs up and a nod my head like this, she goes, yeah, you're good. So we have an electric line trenched all the way from here. Mitch is now the person that I'm probably going to have do the digging on this property right here, but I'm still about to get it up to grade. No, I'm not a builder, I'm a fish tank dude. If any of you all know anything about bringing a property up on the grade or have any advice, please let me know. Here's where we are at this time. I'm actually gonna bring this property up on the grade. At the highest point, it only needs about eight inches of dirt. At the lowest point, it needs about two and a half feet of dirt. I've gotten a quote for about six Gs to get this done. I also asked my father-in-law and my paid engineer, uh, should I get this compacted? They said, absolutely. So we're going slow and we're gonna get it up on the grade sooner than later. Folks, I could talk about the Greenhouse 2.0 all day long. I got one last thing to tell you, and that is this. I don't talk about my wife much, but uh, she is good at designing stuff as far as colors. We have elected and have actually paid the deposit down on the new building for Greenhouse 2.0. We're going to roll with ash gray, and we're going to roll with ivy green, or as I like to call it, Dustin's Fish Tanks green on the roof. So some decisions are being made. But, folks, it is Sunday. It is Species Sunday. Can I talk about some plants with you instead of the greenhouse? Let's do it. But it's Sunday, it's Species Sunday. Where does your boy Dusty go when he's stressed out about playing general contractor in Greenhouse 2.0? He goes to Greenhouse 1.0 and he sits like this and he stares at plants and he watches the plants. And folks, this is a, this is a plant, it's all good.
This is a, uh, a plant that I'm excited to have back in. Bucephalandra, named after Alexander the Great's horse, Bucephalus, where he conquered almost all of antiquity. This is why we play the game, folks, because Boos, unlike a lot of other plants, gives you this crazy iridescent look that simply can't be beat. I got to tell you, this stuff, I used to get it and it was wild collected and it was a lot cheaper than it is today. Now this stuff is actually farm raised. How can you tell? Simple. It's got like longer growth, a little bit better growth on here. Uh, it's been underwater for quite a while. It's not as raggedy looking, but Busa Philandra, oh my goodness. When I advise people on how to take care of Boost, it's simple. Think of Boost like you would think of Anubius. I like higher calcium content in the water. That's one of the benefits of living here in the bluegrasses because we have higher calcium content in our water anytime, generally speaking, with like a Bacopa or a Boost or an Anubius or any other like burly stem plants. You want to think higher calcium content. Um, we have higher calcium content here in the water in Lexington, which is why the horses run so fast around here. But this boost right here is simply can't be beat. Uh, you can notice the long root growth on it. Now, I like to attach Bucephalandra to a rock or to a tree. However, it can handle its roots like Anubius. Its roots can go down to the substrate, not its rhizome. But I want to just show uh, some of these on here. I do have what you see is what you get boost available on my site. Uh, these are portions that will be available as well, but you can check these out. Boost has this just iridescent shimmer to it that I really like, but it takes a while to get that out. Uh, we do daily water changes on it just to make sure any of the missing trace elements are added back in it daily, but you've got so many different varieties. They all have fake names, like this is called Thea or whatever. Um, this one right here is called Red Stem. Obviously, it's got a red stem, so the names are basically made up as you can see uh, some of the varieties of this but I'm super excited about this because in greenhouse 2.0 I'm actually going to be uh, cultivating and growing this out on my own because I don't like the fact that how uh, it's been so savagely taken out of the wild uh, it is what it is these may have ultimately been wild collected but they have been grown out uh, in captivity which I think is nice so yeah folks do me a favor drop me a comment on what you think about boost of philandra how you keep boost i keep boost in highlight you can see new growth popping already here and here uh, i use highlight good water flow because it's a slower grower so you want to have good water flow that's the same thing with the nubius but uh drop me a comment on what you think about boost of philandra let me know if you're a general contractor and you have any advice on getting greenhouse 2.0 up on grade having a good time with these Hit the like button, subscribe button, and share button if you like what we're doing. And tank on, everybody. Later!